My name is David Hicks. My name is Edileuza. A lot of people call me Edi. Edi Hicks. Before we moved here in the U.S., we were praying for a place that we could live and we could be a blessing to the people around. And then I was thinking, how can I introduce myself to other people and like to try to break the ice? And I had the idea, well, basically everybody likes to eat. And I was thinking, what about making, baking some, some, some cake? It's just a fruit cake. It's not, not very fancy. I didn't know exactly how they would react to that. I, I baked my first one and I went to the neighbor, next door neighbor, and I knocked there and I said, Con licença, con licença, he's like, excuse me, excuse me. And someone came and I said, my name is Edie, um, I'm your neighbor here. And so I would like to just to give this cake. And so I'm trying to, to get to know my neighbors around here. Oh, they're glad, they're surprised. They said, wow, you brought us a cake. And then by their way of receiving me, and I was thinking maybe I can do that for other people. So I started baking more cakes and visiting more people. Right now I'm baking around 10 cakes between three and four weeks. I do my rounds again. And sometimes some of the, the kids here, they come and knock at my, my door and they say, hey, when are you coming to our house with our cake? And I said, oh, pretty soon I'm gonna be there. And so it's, it's a blessing. And I think little by little, I'm kind of breaking the ice and getting to know the people a little more. And when you're in the mission field, just stepping outside of your door, you're met with another language and another culture. Most of it is very strange and different. Comimos, mm -hmm. nos comimos, ajos, com feijão, feijão, mm -hmm. aqui, aqui, aqui. My language Please. learning is very important. Ah. <laughs> Uh, but I have to admit that I'm struggling with it. I'm getting older now and my hearing isn't as what it used to be. A lot of times uh, I don't hear all of the, the different sounds. I'm not used to hearing it. That brings difficulty to me. Un litro. Un litro. Está frio. Learning Portuguese also allows me to understand the culture more because language is tied with the culture of the people. I like to sing. Eu gosto de uh, cantar, mm -hmm. just not in front of people. Ah, okay. How did I become interested in becoming a career missionary? Uh, it goes back to when I was a little boy. My mother used to read missionary books to me every day. I was excited when God would be active in their lives and I wanted God to be active in my life. I think it was more ro quite romanticized. I, I had to leave my family. I had to go to different places there. Like, I didn't know the people's languages. It's when you experience mission life that you realize that mission life is not all romance. It's not all heroic deeds day after day. And, but I would say that even though there's sacrifices there, it's worthy. It's worthy to do the work for the Lord. I don't regret. When I go uh, with David, we go out to buy vegetables, not only to the market. Usually I carry books, evangelist books, and those books they talk about, about hope. Especially the way that we're living right now. A lot of people don't have hope anymore. Usually when we buy something from them, I, I ask like, do you like to read? And lots of them, they say, yeah, well, we'd like to read. And here, there's no store that sell, sells book at all. When, when you offer them books, and sometimes they, they ask me, like, how much is it? 
And I said, it, it's free, it's a gift for you. It, it talks about hope. And they smiled and said, oh, thank you so much. Then God bless you. And, and then it doesn't take too long. They're like, people are just coming. Hey, give me one, give me another one. Vovó Laura with uh, the group of ladies on the church. I was surprised by the way that she was living. Uh, we were just driving from house to house and we got there and then I found out that it was a blind lady and she was living by herself. I found out that she had a daughter who had passed away and her husband also died. So the husband family accused her of, of killing her husband. So basically they didn't want to help her. And they were thinking, talking with David, and he said, you know what, there, there are a lot of people here that need help. But there are some people that are in a special need, in special cases. And, and he said, you know what, I think we need to adopt her um, as a person that we're going to help, not just once in a while, but monthly, in a monthly way. This has encouraged Volvo Laura to the point that now she is taking Bible studies. She comes to church now. So we go there and drive her to church and, and drive her back. Um, but I, I'm glad that she's getting to know um, not just us. I don't want her to put faith on us. And I want her to, to have her faith to grow in the Lord um, because we're not gonna be here forever, but that her faith in the Lord that He's going to provide, that doesn't matter what happened, same way that He provides for other people. There's in something inside my heart. I want to pass along the knowledge that I have acquired on Christianity. You are strategizing what would be appetizing, spiritually appetizing, for someone who has a different taste than I do. They were raised different, with different values and with different circumstances, dissimilar. Vicariously through them, I would love to see the church multiplying here. I would like to, to say, um, to remind us, Jesus is, is so soon to come, that we just have a little, little bit time more. We're so close to, to get to Canaan, like the Israelites, we're like right there at the border. So I would like to encourage, encourage all of us not to give up. It's just a little more, it's just a little more.